Hello and welcome to this video. I'd like now just to make a candle plot of the trades and actually put some dots on the candles where trades have occurred for buy and sell. So inside the candle plot notebook we already have a bit of code which plots the candlestick chart so I'm going to copy that code and just paste it down in here. Now I'm going to remove this bit with the MA in MA list here and we'll add something in there in a minute. So just above the creation of the figure I'd like to create a DF plot. It's equal to df.iloc 0 to 50. So that gets us the first 50 candles. And then we'll make df buys is equal to df plot. df plot dot signal is equal to 1. And then we'll make df sells is equal to df plot. df plot dot signal is equal to minus 1. So executing that cell we have one data frame which has all of the first 50 candles there. And then what we're going to do is plot a dot where we have some buys and we'll plot a dot where we have some sells and plot them in different colors. So to plot the buys and the sells is really, really similar. It's only actually the color that's really going to change. And again, this is not the most efficient way, but it'll do for here. We're going to type fig.addTrace and then go.scatter. And then x is equal to dfbuys.time and y is equal to dfbuys.midc. The mode is equal to markers. And then we'll say that the marker itself is equal to a dict where the color is hash 043 EF9 and the size is 12. And now we've done that, I'm going to take that whole thing, copy and paste it, which gives me a bad feeling inside, but never mind. And then take our data frame cells. And the only thing I want to change here is the actual color. So we'll make this one uh, 0EC4CE. So we should, for the buys, have a darker color and for the cells have a lighter color. Actually, that seems to be the wrong way around, a bit counterintuitive. Let me just switch that around here. Okay, so that should be enough just to plot us some candles of our buys and sells for the first 50 candles. So let's have a look. Right, now one thing you'll see on this plot that's a little bit annoying is we've got this gap between these candles here, and that's because we have a weekend here. Now we had this issue also in the moving average plot where you'll notice that things sort of went very flat and then carried on again. What I'd like to do now is just show you how to take this out inside Plotly, because this is also something that's quite difficult to find. So inside the update x-axis, we're going to make something new. We're going to say range breaks is equal to a list. And in here we're going to type dict and then bounds is equal to a list and sat and mun for Saturday and Monday. And now running the plot we have a much smaller gap. We're not going to get the gap exact because here we do have to specify exactly on a Friday night when things end and start up effectively on a Sunday morning sometimes. But for our purposes it's okay. So what we can see in the 50 candles then is the very first candle is a trade. We'll ignore that. And we can see that we have this one here should be a buy and it is the high and low are clearly inside the high and low of this candle here and this one's green so it's a buy. This one here I can't even see the color of it because it's so small but it looks like it's in between this one and therefore it would be a sell. This one here will also be a sell because it's in between these. This one here will be a sell indeed because it's in between these. And let's check this one also a sell and this one also a sell. Some of these look like they might be okay actually. And this one also would be a sell, maybe close to stopping out. This one is then a buy because it's engulfed by that green one and that one's a sell because it's just engulfed by this one. Okay, let's just take another quick look at some other candles just to make sure things don't look completely crazy somewhere. Let's just go from candle 200 to 300. So we'll take a 100 candles and have a quick look. Again, here we have a buy and then, yep, we have a sell. We have a buy here. Now, some of these look okay. It'll be interesting simulating this strategy. And here we have a sell. Okay, buy, sell. Okay, to my eyes, things look more or less all right. So we can be fairly satisfied that we're detecting the trades okay. Good. That means we can get going on working on the logic to actually simulate how this strategy would perform. So comments, questions, welcome as always below the video. Otherwise, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.